Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to worship. I uh, want to thank all the members of the choir and band and, and that are helping us celebrate uh, Folk Music Sunday, and uh, we'll be doing it a couple times this summer. And uh, so thank you for, for coming and helping uh, enliven our worship this morning. Um, also, this morning in worship, we have... Um, we have Ruby Marie's baptism this morning, uh, and uh, Ruby Marie Engel and her uh, parents, Tyler and Cipriano, were members of the last uh, new member class, and so uh, we welcome. Uh, we'll be welcoming Ruby into our into our midst on uh, through through baptism during the service. Um, also. Uh, You've seen the sign-up sheet for the uh, women's uh, fashion show on the 11th, and also a reminder of the um, backpack, backpack blessing at, uh, uh, on the 4th. So those are things we have to look forward to. Um, also, speaking of looking forward, I am, I'm assuming that the ice cream for the ice cream social is on its way. I, I don't... Um, we, uh, we're planning an ice cream social, uh, this morning, and so I'm assuming that it's, it's on our, it's here? Uh, oh, okay, it is here. It will be on the table, i okay, I have it on, on good authority, as opposed to my authority, on good authority, that the ice cream is here, and all kinds of good, wonderful toppings. Those are the announcements I have this morning. Uh, should we stand as we join in the order of confession and forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Seeking reconciliation with God and with neighbor, let us remember the gift of baptism and confess our sin. Seeking reconciliation with God and neighbor. Oh, I'm sorry. God of mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you and one and one another and against the earth entrusted to our care. We are worried and distracted by many things, and we fail to love you above all else. We store up treasures for ourselves and turn away from our neighbors. 
Forgive us that we may live in the freedom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we were laid low by sin and guilt, God made us alive together with Christ, forgiving us all our trespasses by taking our sins to the cross. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Rejoice in this good news. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
And let us pray. Eternal God, draw near to us in Christ, and you make yourself be our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us join in sharing that peace with one another. Peace, Gloria. Peace. 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 Hi. Hi. Peace, James. Peace, Tyler. Peace, Diane. Peace. 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 <laughs> good morning. You're looking good. Um, well, thank, I think so. I'm yeah. doing good, you know. Yeah. I'm moving around a lot. Our first reading comes from the book of Genesis, the 18th chapter, beginning with the first verse. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre. As he sat at the entrance uh, of his tent in the heat of the day, he looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said, and Abraham hastened into the tent and Sarah and said, to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk, and the calf that he had prepared, and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. The word of the Lord. your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently by putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Every time I look 
the holy book I want to tremble When I read about the part where a carpenter cleared the temple Our second reading comes from the book of Colossians, the first chapter beginning with the 15th verse. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for the sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed in his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you 
the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Disciples went on their way. He entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed her into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So he came, she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There's need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Children want to come forward? I'm going to ask you to come out with me a little bit. Because I'm going to ask you to do... You, you guys were here the last time I had you do this to look at the stained glass windows. And... I want you to look at all of them, because today we have a baptism. We have Ruby Marie is going to be baptized. Which of, the, which of those 12 little stained glass windows, beautiful stained glass windows, do you think have to do with baptism? I'll give you a hint. It's on your right-hand side, toward the choir. It's the one at the top right. And you see, if you come back here, you can see a little bit better. You can see that is a, a scallop shell. Have you ever had scallops? No? We had bay scallops last night. They are wonderful. Uh, and I, I was going to look up, I forgot to do, of looking up what it is, why it is the scallop shell was used. We, but we use a shell. We, have a, we don't have an actual scallop shell. We have a, 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 a sterling or stained glass shell uh, in, in the shape of a scallop shell at our baptismal font. Um, and I'm not, I have to admit, I, I'm not sure exactly why a scallop shell uh, was used and, and what was important about that in, in the act of baptism in the, in the church. But as you see the scallop shell, you see three drops of water that are descending from the scallop shell. And those three drops of water represent the the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit coming uh, to us in baptism. And so today, when, when Ruby is 
baptized. We know that as she receives the water of baptism poured on her head, she is receiving the fullness of God, the fullness of God. And so each time you pass a baptismal font, each time you look up at that, at that special stained glass window, time for you, it's also a time for you to remember your baptism and how God has come to you in the, in the fullness of that baptism and comes to you fully, is fully a, a present to you. And so um, just wanted to, to point that out to you this morning so that as you look at those windows, each of those may have a little more meaning for you. Okay. Shall we pray? God, we thank you for the gift of baptism. Uh, we thank you for Ruby's, uh, for Ruby's baptism this morning. We thank you for our own baptism, that we may know the full presence, your full presence in our lives. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Thank you. Thank you. God's grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. My dad had a whole bunch of favorite sayings, but one of the, one of the ones he used to use on us quite often when we had tried something or I'd done something and I'd really messed it up. And when I would, when he would come and wonder what, what I had been doing, what I'd been thinking, or, or what I'd been doing, how did I mess this up so much? My response was often, well, I thought and my dad would cut me off right there. He'd just cut me off and he'd say, Glenn, that's what you get for thinking. <laughs> yeah. And he would go on to explain, you know, if I had just done it as he had, had explained it to me, it would, have, it would have been a whole lot easier. And often the other side of it was, that he would often tell us just to play with something till it worked, till we got it right, till we worked on it and got it right. And so the fact that we had messed it up wasn't all that bad. We just needed to, to, to keep playing with it, to keep working at it until it did come out right and not beat ourselves up with it all the time. Uh, it took me a long time, uh, well into adulthood, to learn that lesson for myself. To learn that, that when somebody points out reality to us, it isn't that they're being critical or telling us what's wrong with us. Simply pointing out the reality of life. The reality of our behavior and what's going on with us. And as we look at this story of Mary and Martha this morning and think about what Jesus is saying to Martha, it's very easy as we read that to, to look at Jesus being very critical and very judgmental of Martha. But I'd ask you to think about how it is that Jesus who loves this family so much. I mean, he, this is the family whose brother was Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead. How is it that he, he who loves this family so much would be so critical? Rather, if we talk about it and look at it as Jesus in his love for Martha, pointing out the reality of what's going on in her life. And saying to her, Martha, you know, the meal will take care of itself. You are distracted by much. Just celebrate in the, in the presence of God, in our presence here with you. 
you can't blame Martha for coming to Jesus and wondering, you know, what am I supposed to do? You bring this whole entourage of people into my house and, you know, Midi's custom, Jewish custom is that I feed them all. I'm supposed to feed them all. And I'm trying to organize our servants and do all of this and I'm getting no help from my sister. Yeah, so why wouldn't I be frustrated? <laughs> and Jesus accepts that. But points out that all this action, if it isn't, if it isn't filled with some sense of the, the presence of God, and of being present to the one who has come into our, to our midst. You know, that it, it is really for naught. In the, some of the reading I did this week, one of the stories I ran across was about a, a young novi novice in a, in a monastery who comes to his mentor to an older monk who is, who is mentoring him through the novitiate. And he comes to him and the mentor asks him in one of their sessions, so what, what's more important, action or prayer and contemplation? And the young novice immediately responds, well, of course, action. You know, we're doing something. We're helping people. We're... You know, this is what we're to be about. And the monk simply says to him, but what if that action, what if we are doing that action without incorporating the presence of God that prayer and contemplation bring to that, to that action? that it is important, it is important to take time to see how, how can we celebrate, how can we celebrate God's presence? How can we celebrate God's presence in, in Ruby's life? How can we let her know that God is present for her? How can we do that for one another? This morning, we're doing it by, you know, we're doing a little bit of that by, by sharing through Jim and Marguerite or sharing ice cream sundaes with you all. But it is the presence of God in our midst. The presence of God in our midst that is what we are celebrating and what we're about. Some of the other reading I did this week was uh, I've been doing a lot of reading about the work of the brain in, in relationship to addiction. And one of the things that I read about was that most of our, most of the actions we take, most of the actions we take come out of our emotional brain. They don't come out of our thinking brain. They come out of our emotional brain. And what happens is we hear a word, we see something going on, and our emotions get going, and we think we need to respond, we need to re and, and we end up reacting, not necessarily responding to what we see going on. I mean, there's, there have been studies that show that happens, and the brain gets the, the, what they call the limbic system, the, the emotional part of the brain, gets highly active when, when things like this go on. When a certain word, we, we hear a certain word, we smell certain smells, we see something that activates that part of our brain. And the interesting thing is that brain will tell us that we need to react in a certain way in a way that we have been taught. 
through our family and through, through our experience of life. And we have two tenths of a second. Two tenths of a second. Think about how fast that is. That's how fast our brain works. We have two tenths of a second to say, no, I'm not going to react in that way. Now, you can talk to Ronnie and tell her how many times I fail that two tenths of a second test. It is, but that is the reality that we can say no. The reality is we can say no to our emotional brain and, and take time to engage our, the f full faculties of all that God has given us to listen, to listen for God's presence, however that may come into our lives. To listen so that we can respond in God's love and not react out of our own emotions. Mary, for whatever reason, when Jesus came, I'm sure, you know, as a younger sister was aware that her older sister was going to want her to be helping her, but somehow said no to that and said, no, I want to, I only have so much time with Jesus. I want to be there. And we see Martha reacting out of her emotion, out of her frustration. So ask you this week to just be aware of the times you find yourselves reacting emotionally, reacting out of the emotional part of your brain. And know and, and pick up on those words or those things that, you know, trigger those emotions for you. And then see what it takes to say no. No, I'm not going to act in that way. I'm not going to react. I'm going to step back and listen. And be present. Be present to God and to God's spirit in my life so that I can hear what it is God would have me do. What is it God is calling me to do? It is something we are called to be as, as a community, as a church also. And as Pastor Chris returns, returns from his sabbatical in, in three weeks, what is, it, what is it that God is calling us to do in partnership with him, with his ministry and with his calling? And how do we listen for God's voice among us to what God would have us do? To do that we need to say no to that emotional reactivity that goes on in our brain and calm ourselves so that we can hear and experience God's presence in our lives. Amen.
Joining our voices to God's people around the world, let us offer our prayers for those in need. For the church, visible and invisible, for all servants of the gospel, for the holy people of God, that we hear your word and share your supper. Let us pray. For favorable weather, for calm waters, calm seas, and for all of creation, that it become for us a reflection of God's glory, for those affected by natural disasters, that they may be provided relief. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who help make our community safe, for police officers and firefighters, for military and international peacekeepers, for local and national leaders, that God's peace and compassion come also to us. Let us pray. For the sick, for the hungry, the imprisoned, for those living with HIV AIDS, those awaiting the birth of children, and all people in need, especially Michael and Cecil, Marilyn and Norma, and those we name in our hearts before you. That Christ, our great physician, care for all who are in distress, let us pray. Have mercy God. For those who are distracted by overwork and those who seek more adequate employment, that we recognize God's goodness in, voc in vocations of all kinds, let us pray. Have mercy God. In thanksgiving for those who have died, and are now at peace, and for their lives that bear witness to the hope promised in the resurrection, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, you hear the prayers of your people even before they are spoken. We commend these and all our prayers to you, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the baptism. We have the congregation turn to page 227 in the front of your hymnal for the rite of holy baptism. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with him, with all the baptized, and in, in the body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. We present Ruby the Radio for baptism. Okay. And called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Ruby Marie baptized into Christ? I do. As you bring Ruby to receive the gift of baptism, you are trusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer, so that your children may learn to trust God, that, that Ruby may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Ruby grow in the Christian faith and life? Thank you. 
And sponsors, do you promise to nurture Ruby and the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help her live in the covenant of her baptism and in communion with the church? I do. Congregation, I'd ask you to please rise. People of God, do you promise to support Ruby and her family or parents and pray for them in their new life in Christ? We do. we do. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways that draw you away from God? The congregation, please join us in the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in a Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and your word created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you had set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism here may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Well, oh, the congregation may be seated. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ruby Marie. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your sons and daughters new birth and cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Ruby and Mar Ruby Marie with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Ruby Marie, you have been marked with the cross of Christ and I'm sorry. 
You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let us welcome, let us welcome Ruby into our midst. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God, bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. She's got big blue eyes, <laughs> taking me all in. Who is this hairy creature? Ha. Yeah. Oh, she's taking all of you in, too. It is my pleasure, pleasure and privilege and honor to introduce you to Ruby Marie Engel, the newest member. The newest member of Morning Star Lutheran Church, more importantly, the newest member of the Kingdom of God. We now know for sure in the rite of holy baptism that God knows Ruby's name. It is our, is our responsibility to make sure that Ruby gets to know God's name. now receive our gifts and offerings.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, for the greening earth given to all, for the talents we are given to share, for this bread, for this wine. Transform us to be the body of Christ, that feasting on this food and this drink, our lives may reflect your generosity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he gave it. He broke it, gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God invites us to this table of abundance. He invites all to come share in the feast. Amen.
blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. you today and always in your journey of faith and peace. and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His love and his peace go with you today and always. Amen. Body and <clears throat> May the body and blood of Christ go with you this day in his peace and in his love. Amen.
Christ. Give him for you. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, go with you in grace and love this day. Amen. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ go with you this day on your journey of faith and love. Amen. I was just inspired for an impromptu message here, but I thought you'd like to know, Buzz Aldrin took Holy Communion 50 years ago today on the, or yesterday on the moon. Aldrin silently read from John 15, 5, which he penned on a 3 by 5 inch note card. As Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me. In the radio blackout, these are Buzz's words. I opened the little plastic packages which contained bread and wine, Aldrin said. I poured the wine into the chalice our church had given me. In the one-sixth gravity of the moon, the wine curled slowly and gracefully up the side of the cup. It was interesting to think that the very first liquid ever poured on the moon and the first food eaten there were communion elements. And I thought <clears throat> I'd like to just also share that some of you knew my mother, Mildred Vaughn, who was a member of this church for many, many years. Her brother, Robert Sunblade, was an aeronautical engineer, and they had a hitch in the Apollo 11 the day before, and they flew him in. He had worked at Cape Canaveral, and they flew him in from Los Angeles, where he was working at the time. He worked on it all night, and it took off the next morning. And then at the same time, um, my friend was stationed, her husband was stationed in Hawaii after serving in Vietnam. I was over there when they landed and stood at Hickam Air Force base next to the fence and waved at the astronauts as they passed by. And I came to find out later, my aunt did a genealogy search. My grandmother was second cousin to Buzz Aldrin. So I have been uh, quite affected this week by all the news and, and looking back on 50 years of history. So thank you for allowing me to share that this time. You're welcome. Please rise and let us pray. O oh God, in this Holy Communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, to serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and to honor the earth which you have made. Through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Live your lives in Christ, rooted and built up in Him, and abound in thanksgiving. The blessing of the Holy Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Uh, before we begin our last song, um, I'm going to invite all the, the children, and adults can be children too, to come up and play um, some instruments today, because this one's going to rock today. We have our folk fun. So come on up. Don't be shy. Will our circle be unbroken? You can use the drum too. If you want to play the drum? Yeah, come on up.